All right, next I'm gonna give a little more detail about how to use RStudio, maybe a little bit better. So one of the first questions is, how do I share my output and results? Whether you wanna share with somebody in your study group, or you want an instructor to see a homework assignment, or you wanna share your research with the whole discipline. I'm gonna give you a bunch of different possibilities and remind you it's okay if you don't start off great from day one. You just wanna be steadily improving. One of the easiest ways to share is to just take a screenshot of your output. <laughs> really ugly, Kluge. Ways to use your phone to take a picture of your screen. It's not optimal, but we've all done that. There are times when, for various reasons, that may be where we're at. But on the other hand, you want to start to do better. The next step up the ladder is to have a file where you copy-paste the commands and copy-paste the output, maybe comment on the output. That's, you know, ugly enough, but we can do better. Next stage would be to create a file called RMD, which is R Markdown File, Markdown, MD. It creates one computer code that has the text of your output and the code that runs it all joined together. With this Markdown file, you can tell it what output should be created. An advantage of an integrated Markdown file is when I write up my results, if I have a separate word processing file, then I would type, for instance, the average value was, and then go over to the data analysis program, execute commands, then copy paste into the you know, Google Doc or whatever word processing file. That's fine to do once or twice, but it's not efficient. And it's error prone. Sometimes your finger slips with copy paste and drops a digit, or you make a change later on. Even the most minor change, but you gotta go back and update all those, and you gotta remember, maybe in this one, it's just inviting errors. The markdown file allows you to have a single program that creates a document. You can type, the average value was, and then you put some code that says, okay, R, now calculate the average value and insert it right here. It can do tables and charts in the same way. It's tremendously useful. From file, new file, then choose R Markdown. I've shown that up top. Create some Markdown file for you as an example. That's below. As with many things in this class, you might say, geez, I can just barely, I'm barely clanging by my fingertips. I cannot bear to learn any goddamn thing more. In which case, fine, you don't have to learn this one goddamn thing more. On the other hand, if you're like, hey, maybe I'm getting this, or at some point down the line, you start to feel that way, and you can learn it. One of my goals in this class is convince a bunch of you that this could be a good career. If you find that you enjoy learning new stuff, then it's a really good career option. It pays good. I'm proud of all the students that go on with a lot less work experience than me, but make a lot more money than I do. I'm teaching here in the public schools. Private sector pays very well. Maybe at some point down the line, you'll want to come back and learn this better. Maybe put a pin somewhere in your brain. Metaphorical pin, don't actually pin in your brain. Don't be too literal. Output can be in an MD file, which is Markdown file, and GitHub knows how to display. That's why I put a bunch of the documents for this course. You can output other types of files, such as web page, HTML, PDF, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint slides, tons of different output choices. There's a link to an R Markdown cheat sheet that gives some popular choices. You create the RMD file in RStudio, and then you knit it together. That's the knit. I put a red circle around that knit command. You want to be getting to be better at storytelling. Analytics is not just doing the complicated technical stuff. It's also explaining why that complicated technical stuff was important, and then explaining what it all means. You need to communicate your findings. You cannot just vomit out the raw output. Again, early in the class, that's okay. You just show you can do it. But you're gonna to wanna to have better tables and charts and nicer output to explain what's going on. Partly because that's how you gain the understanding for yourself. We humans are narrative thinkers. Now, one of the virtues of the Markdown file, like I said, it integrates both the text of the narrative and the calculations. If you look at the bottom of that file, there's code that says pretty numb which calculates this number and tells R how to write it out. Kind of pretty way. 
That way, if the data set changes, when your teammates goes through, oh crap, we had an extra line or something, something went wrong, blah, 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 you know, found a few extra, then it just automatically updates. You're not copy pasting from R to your Google Docs file or something. If you're doing this as a job for your career, then you might have regular reports that get run, in which case you can automate it at all. Last month we had blank sales, and you just tell R to count it up, dude, put it in the document, and it's a lot easier for you. Now, I recognize this is a little more complicated. It's a goal you can aspire to as the semester goes on. By the end of the class, you're going to have to write a substantial report. Now, you can make your code fancy for varying levels of fancy. At the beginning, it can keep it simple, but get better as you go along. I'll show you some steps. You can see what's going on behind the scenes. You can read the knitted output, but then you look at the markdown file that created that output. You can go and look at each of the steps. A plain markdown file, readable by GitHub, is meant to be plain. It's not supposed to have fonts or colors or whiz-bang stuff. It's just plain text, very simple. If you want to create fancier, lovelier output, then you know there are various ways. And there are even people creating artwork with R. That cheat sheet there, has some of the basic stuff like headers and bold and underline and tables and that kind of thing. Now another aspect of our studio is the ability to create projects. A project is a really useful way to keep all your code together in its own folder. I know the typical method is just shove all the files at random onto your Google Drive or whatever. Like you want to be a hoarder. That's really how you want to live your life. That's on you, but I will exhort you to do better. A better way is create each project in a separate folder than all the files there. Then you can port it around, you can share it with other people, and each time you start the session, you double click on the R project file. I've shown an example of how that works there. Your operating system might hide the file extension, you might have to squint to decipher what icon it is, or you can give it a good name. Double click on that file to bring up R Studio everything right where you left it. You know, sharing is caring. We want to create projects that are replicable. That's a fundamental principle of how science gets done. Somebody else should be able to take your file, run the same commands, and get the same output. That idea of replicability is a fundamental aspect of doing science right. One of the key parts of any scientific enterprise is somebody else can take the same data and get the same results. That's a way of demonstrating that your conclusions are valid. You can provide replicatable commands so somebody else would get the same answers if they did the same thing. It's also relevant because you'll often be working in groups and you want to keep your team all together. If I do it and some other team member does it, then damn, we better come up with the same output. Most jobs involve teamwork, so this is a useful career skill too. It's another reason I'm encouraging you to figure out GitHub because that's a useful way to demonstrate your skills to somebody, for instance, a prospective employer. If all the files needed to do a particular analysis are all sitting in the same folder, that's easy to share that folder. So don't be a hoarder with a huge collection of random junk. Particularly, you might want to come back to the code at a later date, maybe even just a week later, depending on how much fun you have over the weekend, you might not remember everything you did previously. Be nice to yourself, your future self. Your future self will appreciate the time you're putting in now to get better organized.